Hello guys, welcome back to Not Just Make, it's Marco here and today we start talking about the endless possibilities of the true metallic metals. Let's face it, we are all obsessed by the non-metallic approach. It's visually interesting, makes the models look like cool illustrations, it works better for pictures and is perfect to control lights and reflections on display models to tell a precise story. These days we tend to associate non-metallic with an higher quality, but that's only because metallic paints are usually used way below their full potential. Ironically, when painting a good true metal, you have to follow the exact same rules for non-metallics, and that's because both have to follow the rules of lights and reflection to be truly believable. And for gaming models in particular that are constantly moving around the table under different lights and angles, I think that true metals are more effective to sell the illusion of light, but we have to start thinking and working with them in a different way, or better, like any other color. Today I start showing you what we can do with metallic paints and how to use them properly, especially with the airbrush. Remember to subscribe, hit the bell button and check the links down below in the description. And if you want to support the channel and my work, check the Patreon page and its rewards. Thanks a million guys! Here is a little personal project perfect for today's topic. A Stormcast Warband for Warcry inspired to the game Blasphemous. I'm a huge fan of Dark Souls and its aesthetic and Blasphemous is an awesome concentrate of that imagery, with a very iconic main character that I needed to bring on the battlefield. Since I'm sure a lot of you will ask for more information about them, here are some details. I have Cherubs to use as Heather Wings, these come from uh, the Space Marine Librarian kit, uh, built on Heather Wings bases. Flagellants as uh, Griffounds, the heads are from the Frostgrave Cultis kit, uh, plus uh, various bits. And the Penitent Ones, they are simple liberators. I removed the tabards, changed the swords with the two-handed version, and I added little relics and details all around. The ruined cape on the left shoulder is made with a kitchen paper soaked in PVA glue, with a similar process to the one I used in the Corn Berserker video. I removed the halo from the helmets and used it later to make the crowns. The cones have a metal wire inside drilled inside the heads for support, and they are modeled with milliput. To make the spiral decoration I used army painter barbed wire, glued on top and covered with a light coat of putty to fuse it into the main structure. The plan here is to create a cold shiny metal with a chrome feel, but weathered and a bit ruined. Let's start priming. I usually use Molotov Black, that's already a bit satin, but when working on metals, especially on gaming models, where I plan to use a lot of airbrush, I like to increase its shine adding some gloss varnish. This goes in the airbrush, pure, without any dilution. You can see that it's not really glossy, but it has its own natural shine, and that's all I need to support and boost the next layers. Working on metal, we don't need the black and white sketch because uh, they don't work well in full transparency mode. I like scale 75 metal paints for the airbrush because they have a very fine pigment and a natural flowing consistency with a good bond over the pigments. Dilution of metal colors can be tricky, because adding only thinner it's easy to free the metal flakes inside the paint, so I add some fluid glaze medium to balance the consistency and keep the metal pigments together. This will give me a uniform, solid, shiny coverage when spraying. I start with a yellowish orangey base to create immediately a strong contrast with the next layers. This will be the base for the reflections from the ground and the lower surroundings, and will give the sensation of rust in the upper parts. The base is scale 75 decayed metal, with burnt amber and black ink to create a darker warmer tone. This is a simple coat all around the model. I just avoid eating the lowest parts with an heavy coat to create a bit of transition with the black in the shadows that I reinforce better later. Thanks to the dilution and the glaze medium inside, the metal paint gains a transparency similar to any other acrylic diluted for the airbrush. This gives me here a tone darker from what I see in the pot, because there is a bit of the, the black base still showing from the first layer. That's really important for the later steps, uh, to make the various layers interact more naturally together, and not only to be one on top of the others. The exact same principle we use to paint a skin, for example. 
In this step I set the main tone for my armors, creating an instant strong jump of contrast from the first warm tone. My main color is scale 75 black metal and I add turquoise to add a strong cold sensation. Here you can see the difference when I add glaze medium to the mix. Paint flows on the walls of the trays altogether without a separation of the liquid part from the pigments. This time I spray from above with a loose angle of 45 degrees. Every step has to show a bit of the previous work in the right spots. And now a huge thank you for the awesome support to my best patrons. I love you guys! And here is the result. Layers of metal paint merge very well together when properly diluted, and the progression can be more gentle and natural than with any other kind of paint. In this step we are in the middle of the scale of layers I want to apply with the airbrush. We have a mid-tone and the first shadow already in place, and on top of them I want to apply some texture that will be blended in the scheme by the next colors. I mix black metal and trash metal to create a neutral tone with an higher value compared to the colors I have already on the models. Even the newest armor has imperfections on uh, its surface, and even if I want these uh, to have a chrome feel, they are definitely not new and spotless. I use a sponge to create the effect in a super quick and easy way. The process is similar to a dry brush. Use the sponge like a brush taking some color and cleaning it almost completely on a piece of paper. The less color you have on the sponge, more control you have while applying it. Tap on the surface to create random patterns and scratches. They don't have to be very evident, but just add some movement to the flat surface, so creating a good tone, lighter than the base but not too much, is the key. I concentrate the effect in the mid-tones where it's more natural to have this kind of visual information, and a bit in the upper parts to create the basis of a natural gradient. Now the surface is full of movement and subtle interesting natural shapes. These can seem messy now, but everything will be defined and fused together later. For my second highlight with the airbrush, I mix turquoise ink to reinforce the blue sensation, heavy metal and speed metal. This time I add a lot of thinner and glaze medium to enhance the transparency of the mix, because I don't want to cover my texture too much. I spray from above with a sharper angle, staying almost perpendicular to the base. I insist more in the highest parts, covering more aggressively the texture effect. Where you have a lot of light and reflections, the visual information of the texture is naturally covered. Same thing in the shadow, where the lack of light doesn't let you see the texture. Thanks to the shine and the blue tones in the reflections, the general effect starts to be what I planned. Here I apply with the same principle a tiny extreme light with speed metal. I put it just in a couple of eye spots to give a final almost white mirror finish. At this point I need to reinforce my shadows and their tones. To maximize the contrast in the metal work, one of the main tricks is to have shiny glossy highlights and shadows that tend to be matte and opaque. This creates a huge jump in contrast that helps to enhance the volumes of the figure and it also helps to control the direction of lights and reflections, modeling the shadows around them. I do this using contrast paints with the airbrush. I usually use matte opaque standard acrylics for this step, but contrast paints are very matte and quite transparent when sprayed with the airbrush, and they are ready to use from the pot as they are. I spray snake by leather from below, reinforcing the first warm tone, and extending the hair a bit to create the illusion of a low reflection.
Same thing using Black Templar in the deepest shadows. The last step is to bring back definition with some final outlining. For the sake of speed and simplicity I paint my shadow outlines with black oil paint. I mix the paint with white spirit, looking for a watery fluid consistency, able to run by itself inside details and lines. I apply the oil only inside the details creating strong sharp lines with no effort. I don't want to cover anything and I don't plan to clean with q-tips, so I try to be precise and let the oil to do the whole work for me. For the light outlines and the hedge highlights, I prepare on a piece of parchment paper, heavy metal, speed metal, white alchemy and cobalt. It's important to remember while painting these highlights that in different zones of the figure we have different values. The light caught by an edge on a foot is different from a light in the edge of a shoulder pad or the helmet, and we have to paint them with different tones and values. This is the step where I invested most of my time. And here you can see the difference between the metal without and with the light outlines. Shapes and details are sharper and easier to understand from a distance. This is only the very tip of the iceberg of what we can do with metals. A quick approach, good for gaming models, that's also a good gateway for more advanced techniques. I love to paint with metallic paints, so in the future you'll see a lot of different approaches to create every possible kind of metal and metal finish. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. You can always ask me anything down below with a comment and follow my projects through the week using one of my socials. And if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon page and join the community. See you next week, guys.